you're best known as being a biomechanist and I imagine some of your colleagues have pigeonholed you into that niche even though I'm sure your approach has some biopsychosocial roots and my own perspective is that working on how people move should be at the core of all low back pain treatment but other adjunct interventions can be helpful so what do you think about common non-surgical and non-pharmacological approaches that focus in part on roles of cognition or even metacognition in pain processing such as cbt and mindfulness practices it's very difficult for me to see where the uh line occurs and the difference between the two. As I said, we started the experimental research clinic over 25 years ago, and I started the first appointment to be two hours in length. I knew that if I was going to be the person who made a difference in that person's life, I couldn't follow the traditional medical model, which was a 10 minute appointment. So I would invite the person, tell me your story. And then I just kept quiet. And they would give you gold. They would explain why they failed at the previous 10 attempts. Um, what were the impediments that were uh, not understood and addressed? Um, do you know after the, and I must say, Greg, that all of my medical colleagues said, two hours, what are you going to do for two hours? And I said, I'm going to understand and measure and probe why they have back pain. I'm going to really work to understand it. The process begins with an interview. And that interview, uh, they might talk for 15 minutes. They might talk for 45 minutes and for the first time reveal uh, the pressures in their lives that stop them from complying. I say, well, why don't you walk it after dinner? They say, well, it's dark. I can't. I can't. I'm not safe in my neighborhood. So what is their compliance going to be? That's a psychosocial issue. So, you, you know, we recognized these things 25 years ago. And after the end of the first year, we changed the two-hour appointment to a three-hour. Unheard of. So when people say, oh, McGill, you're a biomechanist, I wish they would come and see what it is we do. Uh, we realized that many years ago that we had to understand the full drivers to the uh, person's pain. Um, having said that, the assessment, if it's thorough and comprehensive, will reveal the mechanism of their pain. I'm going to give you an example. Uh, or may, maybe no, that, that, I'm not going to start with that one. That might be a, a bit unfair. If the exam takes the person through a series of postures, motions, loads, activities that the person tells you causes their pain, and if you can't make their pain worse or change it, it's not mechanical pain. There's something else. So when it's something else, we investigate and we find, you know, you have a cancerous tumor on L4. It's metastasized. You have an aorta aneurysm. You have a lung embolism. You have Lyme disease or whatever it is, the pattern doesn't fit. So when you can't move the pain with the provocative testing, something else is going on. It might be that the person is sitting on this chair. We're in the clinic here, obviously. I sit them on the Harley Davidson stool and they sit down and I come over behind them and I touch their back, running my hand down it, feeling for some antalgia. And here's the response. I touch their back and they go, Ooh. what does that show you? I've just identified an abuse victim. Most of the time, someone who recoils, oh, now I need to have a nice little conversation. And I find out that they live with an abusive husband. They cannot do a bird dog on their living room floor because that would trigger some abuse from their husband. They're living in hell. No one has ever touched them before. No one has ever found the links 
that explains their pain. So when you ask me, oh, I'm a biomechanist, uh, I am, but I've studied how to interview and extract information like an FBI agent would. Uh, sometimes it's tough. Sometimes it's very loving to, our interview starts upstairs in front of a fireplace. I sit at 45 degrees from the person, never in front of them. The science that goes behind this whole process is about, <laughs> we have docs who come here with their patients and observe the process and they say, man alive, that's the most biopsychosocial, complete, thorough process we've ever seen. And they, they, they don't uh, get that. And then I know <laughs> people who know me that they have jokes that they call, oh, you're a spinal file. You will do anything with anybody, anywhere, if you can learn a little bit more about the spine. And it doesn't matter whether it's psychological, biomechanical, mystical, or, or what else. And, and that's really been the, the story of my life. So yes, I was trained as a biomechanist, but I've spent great effort to try and understand uh, all of these other drivers of uh, pain. So let me now go to an example and uh, this was an English fellow. I was giving a little uh, clinical talk as a, as a guest at a clinic one evening. And it was a fella sitting in the corner, very distraught like this. And he came up to see me in the break in the middle. And he said, can I tell you my story? And I said, sure. He says, I, I, I used to be a police officer. And you could see the emotion in his voice. It was shaky. And you could see by his posture he was a defeated man. Power people don't sit in a defeated posture. Back pain people do. This slumped posture is the posture of depression. If you look at any clinical psychological textbook, it will show you the drivers and indicators of clinical depression. He was showing all the signs and he said, I used to be a police officer. I had uh, a lifting injury. I was carrying a refrigerator or whatever it was. And I hurt my back. I went to the clinic and they gave me all these exercises that you just showed was, would hurt my back even more. But I kept doing them and I got worse and worse. And then I went to, to the NHS, National Health Service in England. And uh, finally, they sent me to the pain clinic and they gave me some drugs, some painkillers, plus a booklet, How to Live with Your Pain. And he said, when I got that booklet, it destroyed me. You mean for the rest of my life, I have to live this way? And uh, I said, well, you know, <laughs> humor me. Let's go to the back of the room and I want you to sit down. Now, spread your knees apart, lean back in the chair, get your feet underneath you, suck up some air, lean forward and stand up. And I said, did that trigger your pain? He said, no. I said, good, make your hands big like this with your thumb and your fingers with a V. Put your kneecap between your thumb and the rest of your hands. Slide your hands down. Don't move your back, just move your hips back. Now, leaning tower, push your toes down, lean forward over your ankles, show me your triceps, create some upper body stiffness, and push your shoulders away from your ears. Now tune the curve of your back and make it sweet so there's no pain. And he was able to do this very quickly. Now I said, don't lift with your back. Keep that demeanor, and I was just tricking him into controlling stiffness. And I said, now pull your hips through. I said, does that cause your pain? He says, no. And then I gave him a target way out here. And I said, turn and reach for the target. And he turned and he couldn't do it. And I said, move your hips back and turn your hips and then reach. Pull your hips through and stand up. Greggy started to cry. I'm gonna to start to cry. His life was ruined by the incompetence of the clinicians he had seen who couldn't find his pain, never did an assessment and defaulted to accusing him that the pain was in his head and they were going to give him some therapy and a booklet of mental games to how to live with his pain. And he realized he'd been stolen from. 
anyway, if, if, if I can get back to that. Now, what did we do? Did I do biomechanics? Did I do physiology? Did I do neuroscience? Or did I do cognitive behavioral therapy? And I think you will see it was a fusion of all of it. I empowered him to move in a way that didn't trigger his pain. Um, I met him on Zoom a couple of, uh, some time later. And uh, he was a changed man. The stress was gone out of his face. He'd got his confidence back. He was empowered back for life. And I said, what are you going to do now? And he says, well, I can't go back to policing, but uh, I've got some other jobs now lined up and I'm, I'm ready to go. Uh, so it was the full intervention. And I, you know, I'm not a psychologist, but completely empowered him through the confidence of pain-free movement. It was everything you could think of with a little bit of competent coaching. So I don't see the difference between the bio, the psycho, the social. It, it, it just disappears in a thorough assessment because it always shows you the way.